first say thank you for I mean coming this weekend. It's been it's been incredible. We came last night. We came this morning, and, and all all services were great. You're you're a, a gift and to the musical world, and I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you. Um, so first, uh, I just want to go through a couple of questions with you. In in this ministry that you've been involved in and in singing for how many years have you been doing it? Over fifty years. It's incredible. Well, gosh, yeah. Much. What's been your biggest joy in this ministry? Uh, actually, the biggest joy has been the fact that I'm doing what I knew I was put on earth to do. Uh, it's like it's a conglomeration of things, but basically, it's just the fact that I wanted to do this since I was young. Uh, since I was a little boy mm -hmm. and somehow that was piped into my brain that that's what I was going to do and although I came from a very musical family I was the only one who really that's all I ever wanted to do I never uh, really had ventured out to do anything else everything I did was to get eventually to the situation where I could be full-time in music and when I started with Andre, uh, we became full full time properly in 1966. But before that, we started in 1964. And I've, you know, that's what I've wanted to do. I've had great jobs and, you know, in good industry and uh, great uh, jobs. And, uh, you know, when the Imperials called me, I was working for travelers in, uh, in Los Angeles and I was doing very well. I was one of their uh, better uh, <laughs> salesmen and a lot of people helped me but that was not what uh, my call was. Actually when my manager heard me sing at some Christmas deal because I used to tell him that I wanted to sing he said well you don't belong here you need to be singing mm -hmm. somewhere. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so tell me about the time when you came to Christ, came to a knowledge of you know Jesus and, and how he came, a short testimony. Yeah, well, I was staying at my grandfather's home, which was right across the street from my mom and dad. I would, every summer I'd go and live with them. And he would always listen to preachers on the radio and when they would call out scripture, he would tell me where to go in the Bible and I would read it to him or be. And he just here, my grandmother and grandfather, just by my being with them and reading scripture, I knew my life didn't, didn't measure up to God because I thought if I was just a good boy, I could get by. But it wasn't that. And so they were having a business meeting on a Wednesday night, and I was so under the conviction of the Holy Spirit until I interrupted their business meeting, just, you know, a kid, and said, and they, you know, they said, what do you want? I said, I just want to be saved, you know. And uh, they prayed for me uh, to receive the Lord, and I've been walking with Him ever since. What year was that? That was, oh man, I was about. 12 years wow. old. I don't okay. know the year because I'm so old. <laughs> so outside of obviously Christian and gospel, what uh, genre of music has most influenced you in your lifetime? I guess in, in my early uh, life, I liked artists like Sam Cooke and uh, uh, even I listened to everything. Now the one thing came from a very strict background, but music was okay. You know, stuff that even the popular music and everything, as long as it didn't have, you know, terrible lyrics. Mm -hmm. And so that was the great influence because I love Sinatra. I love all of the different styles, Nat King Cole. But I, and I started, you know, messing around writing songs when I was young, but never, you know, just threw them somewhere. Mm -hmm. But what the person who, uh, the thing that I always wanted to do is be versatile. It was never by having the best voice or who can hit the highest note or the I just wanted to sing different styles. And I guess one of my major influences was a guy that you don't hear about anymore, but his name was Bobby Darin. And Bobby Darin was like, he could sing like Frank Sinatra, 
he died young, well, relatively young. He had a song called Somewhere Beyond the Sea. He had Mag the Knife. But the first thing I heard was when he sang a song, or a kind of a rock song called Splish Splash. I, I thought it was a, that. yeah, yeah. I thought it was a black guy. Mm -hmm. And that was the inspiration to me. I wanted to do all different styles of music yeah. like that. I just thought that must be so much fun, you know, to do that. Yeah. And when, you know, with the different groups that I've been, that was the driving force. Uh, with Andre, I knew I could sing like the guys, you know, what Andre was doing. But when the Imperials called, I joined them because it was a stretch for me to sing Southern Gospel mm -hmm. and the stuff they were doing. Scripture, do you have a favorite Bible verse and what's mean a lot to you? I'm trying to think. Probably I can do all things through yeah. Christ who strengthened me. Yeah. You know, I enjoy that, in that. Yeah. Because I. I think I beat the odds. Big, uh, and my, another favorite of mine was, If you abide in me, mm -hmm. John 15, John 15. 7, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and shall be done unto you. That was probably even greater than the first one I mentioned, because that was what <clears throat> got me, helped me to achieve my dream. Um, because people told me, when you grow up poor and you're around other poor people, they can really, and not just poor people, but people can step on your dream. Because they all, they used to make fun of me. I used to tell all my friends and people who would listen that I was gonna travel all over the world and I'm gonna sing gospel music. And they would laugh at me and say, you better join the army and something like that. But I did that and because of, of God, you know, because there are a lot of great singers, but God is the one who lifts you up because I, I have no problem. I, I think people, in, there are some people in my family, brothers and sisters, I thought sang better than me. It's not about that. It's about turning your life over to him. You know, I think about the story of David he didn't look like a king, but he was, you know. <laughs> he was the one that God chose. Yeah, the, and I feel like I was chosen to do what I do because all my brothers and sisters, there were seven of us, mm -hmm. they all said I was different from all of them. I was a dreamer. Uh, when everybody else is out doing their thing, I was home with mom and dad and telling them about my dreams and what I wanted to do. And I always wanted them to be proud of me. Mm -hmm. So you've been all over the world, you've, you've sh shared the gospel with thousands of people, came to, you know, many souls have no, no doubt been saved under your ministry. Uh, through all the successes and all the failures of your ministry, would you, would you go back and do it all over again if you could? Without a doubt. Absolutely. Without a doubt, I would, I, you know, even with the disappointments and everything, I think I would be, you know, there are some things I would do a little differently. Uh, but no, I, I, I'm doing exactly what I was put on earth to do. And I'm a happy man. I guess sometimes I'm silly, you know, because I like to laugh at myself and poke fun at myself. And one of the things that has really kept me grounded is my wife and my son would really, because uh, I remember when my son was in high school at Putnam City West, and uh, he went to the door and he said, he looked at me with a disgusted look on his face. He said, Dad, those are some of my classmates, they want to meet you. Like, what in the world would they want to meet you for, you know? And he, that's how it came across. And he and my wife kept me grounded because I don't care what the people say about you, take out the trash, you know? <laughs> And, and I, that is, a, they have been my, they really, really helped me more than anybody. Because you, you can get jaded and everything. Mm -hmm. You start uh, believing you're oppressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they kept me grounded. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I got for you. I thank you so much. Well, thank it, you. It's been a great weekend. I hope you, I hope you can use it. Yes, okay. I will.